With impressive sales and number one records in his catalog, it's fair to say that Meek Mill was once considered one of the biggest artists in the game. Now, Yo. rappers losing their- Yo, what? He was, bro. Like, really? What happened? Like, dang. What happened to him? He really was, like, at the top, bro, at one point. It's just... Like, what happened? Seriously. Spotlight isn't anything unusual. We have seen countless artists rise and fall for many different reasons over the years. But what makes Meek's journey from the top of the music industry to a lower level of fame so intriguing is not that he lost his ability to produce quality music. But instead, it was simply the fact that he became an internet laughingstock. And people haven't let up on scrutinizing or mocking every single thing he does. How did this happen? Especially for a rapper like Meek Mill, whose career began as a respected street artist and was raised in one of the grittiest neighborhoods of Philadelphia. My name is Luesta, and today we're investigating all of the events that led Meek Mill to getting clowned out of his career. He just doesn't understand the internet, bro. Like he really needs somebody who to run his Twitter account, bro. He should not be running his shit on his own. He needs somebody to run that. Stop giving him access to his accounts, bro. Like, have somebody run his stuff. Like, at this point, bro, he should not have access to his accounts. He does not understand the internet. He doesn't understand how it works. Like, he needs to stop running his accounts, bro. He, he has to Capable stop. Capable of spitting bars, which depicted him in those too late rough now, areas though. of the city of brotherly love, Meek's early work felt raw, rugged, and essential at a time when not many street artists were popping off. Look, some of nice can even turn cold, and the streets of Philly when niggas don't even get to turn old. My heart pumping to a turn gold. You stuck in neutral and riding like fuck it, it's a long road. And even to this day, people still reminisce to the times when he was dropping classic mixtapes or even his debut studio album, Dreams and Nightmares, which was home to one of the greatest <sighs> intros of all time. I pray for times like this. For <laughs> Nah, oh god, that is like one of the greatest songs of all time, bro. Niggas still play that. They're gonna be playing that for generations, bro. Man. Like this, the rhyme like this, so I had to grind like that, to shine like this in a matter of time I spent on some locked up shit. His potential was evident for all to see. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I would <laughs> see. So much so that it's hard to believe that it went so wrong from there. But if we're to look back at when things began to get out of his grasp, it arguably started with a rapper who's about as far removed from the streets of Philly as possible. If we were to pick the moment where Meek went from a formidable MC to a figure of ridicule, it's fair that beefing with Drake is when things went from good to bad. As everyone, including myself, has covered extensively, Meek and Drake had a collaborative relationship until a track by the name of Rico, which dropped on Meek Mill's 2015 album, Dreams Worth More Than Money. After Meek took exception to a line about the girl of your dreams, which he interpreted to be about his then girlfriend Nicki Minaj, a beef ensued when Meek decided to out Drizzy for having a ghostwriter. But ghost. Why would he do it? Like, this was so dumb. If he. Why did he put that in a tweet? If he put that in a song, a diss track, ooh, that would have been. Ooh, that would have went insane, bro. But he, like I said, he's, a, he's not. He's not. He's not all the way here, bro. He should have put that in a song, bro. If he put that in a song, it would have been lights out for him. I ain't gonna lie. Like, like it would have been over with. But he fucking tweeted it out like an idiot, bro. Like, it was still big, but, like, no one cares anymore. Writer or not, he was about to get smoked when it came time for diss tracks to drop. Oh, yeah. He put that stupid shit in the tweet, bro. And then Drake dropped it back to back, nigga, which is a hit, bro. Like, that shit is fire. I still play it, bro. Like, most niggas don't even know that's a fucking diss. On Back to Back and Charged Up, Meek pretty much got bodied in front of the whole world to see by Drake. To add insult to injury, Drizzy then detailed on his song, Summer 16, that one night when they were both in the Four Seasons, Meek and Nicki had the room below his suite. To capitalize on this, he played Back to Back over and over again, with Meek doing nothing about it. Considering Meek was known as the hard-edged rapper from Philly, this wasn't a good look. But what didn't help is that there was a domino effect to getting clowned by Drizzy that even his then MMG label mate Wale got involved in. I, I honestly think, you know, he brought like a pencil to a gunfight. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring a knife, a pencil. You know what I'm saying? You piece of paper. Try to paper cut him to death. Like, you can't compete with somebody that got them type of relationship. In response, Meek didn't aim at Wale meaningfully. Instead, he went to Twitter, a place that would soon become a routine source of mockery for him, to basically say that he got his feelings hurt. While I just ain't tweet- He needs somebody to run his Twitter account. Why do they still let him run his account, bro? 
They should have stopped that years ago, bro. This is going on for 10 years. Like, that was 10 years ago, bro. And they still let him run his account. Like, why? Take his account. Do not let him tweet no more, bro. Stop. Need to think about my album. Stop. He's been hating on me for a long time Thank now. God. Don't even text me, cornball. Alongside coming Cringe. across as overly sensitive, the fallout from the Drake beef continued to have a ripple effect on his career. Because every time he tried to stick his neck out and reassert himself, he just got destroyed publicly time and time again. When he decided to fixate on Drake's alleged ghostwriter, Quentin Miller, and even ordered his goons to put the beats on him at one point, it just seemed like a complete overkill to most people. Still unwilling to take the L and simply move on, Meek then implanted himself into the Joe Budden and Drake beef, where he referred to Budden as a crackhead. In typical fashion, Joe clap back with a simple but effective put down and basically won the beef by letting the world know that he was a simple but a number one i think you've taken some things out of contest i didn't diss you number two you don't even rap well enough to go and you don't rap well enough to go this route with me effective put down and basically won the beef by letting the world know that he was simply too elite of a spitter to go blow for blow with meek Whereas when 50 Cent waded into the whole scenario, he seemed to bypass Meek's talents and go straight at his intelligence. When 50 Cent was asked about how Meek was dealing with his beef with Drake, he mentioned that Meek Mill made a questionable move by starting trouble with AR Ab. AR Ab is not just a rapper from Philadelphia like Meek Mill, but he's also known for being involved in some serious criminal activities that has him locked up in prison for the foreseeable future. Who's this? A-R-A-B? Who's that? Drake had mentioned A-R Ab in Back to Back, and Meek Mill's decision to target him was seen by 50 Cent as a bad move, suggesting it wasn't smart to stir up issues with someone so notorious. It turned into the, the kid being on stage saying, fuck A-R Ab. And I didn't understand it when he did that. I was like, oh, it's a special kind of stupid going on over here. Now you just took something that completely was non-threatening, went with Drake and and this one mm. and turn it into something that could potentially turn into you bumping in, in Philly. That's mm. true. You know, he's really not that bright. <laughs> <laughs> that kid is not that bright. Look, the easiest thing you could do is bring other people into the statements that you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. While you write music. Over time, Meek would backpedal to the point that he would even collaborate with Drake again, making this the first of several mishaps that he would make when it came to public relations over the years. However, while Drake and Meek eventually managed to patch things up, the same really can't be said for him and academics. This long-running feud started when Meek first became aware of Ak's content and his existence. Academics never reported kindly when it came to Meek, often calling his albums a flop and that he was steadily becoming irrelevant. You spent all that money. Damn, Ak was right. He was fucking right. Damn, y'all be on his ass, but he be right. And still didn't hit over 100. This is sad. It's important to mention that Ak is a diehard fan of Drake, and the fact that Drake and Meek had a feud in the past could certainly fuel his hatred towards him. But once he realized academics had been covering his music on his account, he declared it a mumble rap promotion page. Ak isn't exactly loved by everyone, but even those who strongly dislike him realized that Meek was going overboard. Meek playing with himself with this shit. If it's really a mumble rap promo page, then why bother caring about it? Meek mostly just comes off as salty here. Surprisingly, Meek didn't catch on to the fact that targeting Ak, a hip hop blogger, wouldn't really bring him any benefits. Despite this, he continued to go after Ak whenever the opportunity arose, such as the time when he tweeted this in June of 2020, saying, Academics is canceled because he's a bad police and our culture doesn't need them. He also gassed a lot of beef that got people killed and hurt and never donated a dollar to the culture. We gon' holla at you, next run champ. While some agreed with Meek, others found it amusing that he believed he was in a position to target Ak and didn't hesitate to share their thoughts. People letting a blogger get them this mad? You know you can't cancel nobody, weak mills. As time went on, each interaction between Meek and Ak seemed to backfire on Meek only reinforcing the idea that he is no longer a figure to be feared or respected. And when he essentially suggested that he was going to place a bounty on Ak's head, the blogger didn't hesitate to remind him that the whole thing was ridiculous coming from a platinum selling artist. Stop snitching on yourself. Stop telling the world you're green lighting people and just do what you have to do. Because right now, like, when you say green lighting, I send that to the police. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, yo, are you green lit? Wait, Meek Mill just told me in front of the world I'm green lit? Okay, here's a cop. Hey. Meek Mill, that's his account, that's his people. Do you say I'm Greenland? 
Are you dumb? From that initial interaction onwards, Meek made an influential enemy who would be ready to pounce whenever he slipped up. As a result, whether Meek is weirdly eating fries from his legs by the pool, hanging from bamboo sticks, or allegedly paying for posts from blogs to try and boost his lackluster sales, Ak has always been there to catalog his many, many errors, including when he went for one of the most controversial figures in hip hop in what should have been a home run, only to lose out again. A longtime friend of academics, former king troll of hip hop, and verified snitch, Takashi 6 ix journey has taken a severe downturn in recent years. And yet, the man who had ratted on- Oh yeah, it's over for him, I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't see a comeback. On everyone it's in the over. Nitrate Bloods, somehow still got one over on Meek when they were beefing, only further cementing the sense that he was not to be taken seriously. After a series of back and forth exchanges, the situation escalated when they encountered each other in Atlanta. This led to a heated argument happening entirely behind their security teams. That's a fact, you That's a fact, you It didn't look good for either of them, but for Meek, who was seen as a real gangster, it especially hurt his image, which was already taking a lot of hits. For many people who supported him before, this moment seemed like a turning point. Meek became an L after this shit. I'm sorry, I can't fuck with Meek after this. For others, it was a sign that Meek had some growing up to do. We gotta stop putting people in Damn, the Joe Bun pod, bro. Damn. It's not the same no more. I, don't, I have not watched that shit since 2020, bro. Damn. Positions that they're not ready to be in. I feel like a lot of the shit that Meek has going on, he was kind of pushed into it. Any wrong move and... And you could become the villain. Right. Uh, Meek should have ran from that situation, yeah. and the internet would have killed him and said, "Look at Meek running." Like no matter what, Meek was gonna lose in that situation. This brings us to a critical aspect of Meek's career. For years, he seems to be caught in somewhat of an identity crisis, where he can't decide whether or not he wants to be a street rapper or a motivational figure. This uncertainty in his choices often makes it easier for fans to criticize him. Obviously, in his younger days, no one expected Meek to be a socially aware rapper. But following his incarceration in 2017 from a parole violation. Violation, the man that re-emerged seemed to be different. After being released from jail, Meek became a campaigner for change, teaming up with Michael Rubin, who also wouldn't make things any easier for Meek in the long run, as you'll see later. Meek launched the Reform Alliance, an organization which fought to change how the prison system and sentencing operated. This was a far cry from street beef, and it looked like Meek had really turned the corner. Overwhelm, I come from being in prison just seven days ago, what I call history, because I know it's a lot of voiceless men and people I personally know from being in prison, sitting next to them every day, who are dependent on me. And I feel like God has given me a, a great platform to help many others and make Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the world a better place. However, just months after it appeared he had a new focus and brand direction, he was back to speaking recklessly. One example of this is when he got himself banned from the area by a local artist named Poundside Pop. Rather than continuing to preach the virtues of peace or rising above it, Meek tweeted, we run the hood. The fuck is you saying, lol. At a time where he should have been moved on from worrying about running Philly, to running his own businesses like his mentor Jay-Z, Meek had still talked tough whenever the opportunity arrived. And at the age of 36, it's not necessarily a good look. The niggas ain't fucking with me, man. Mm -hmm. I be hearing a lot of people talking and shit like mm -hmm. that. It's Just really talk. like that. Like, if I go out in my hood, it's really like that. We really are not. I don't want to entertain of, we say we got 500 murders a year. That means it's a lot of killers in our neighborhood. When I come out in Philadelphia, I'm like super safe. You know what I mean? It's, it's not nothing to promote. And if I come out, we bring real street niggas together from city to city. Yet, yeah, as Wayno noted on Cringe. every day struggle, this wasn't a lesson Mill seemed willing to learn. And it meant that his own Dream Chasers label couldn't take off as it should. I wish that Meek would see that he's like, I wouldn't say above things, but certain things he just got to stay out of. You know what I mean? As, as an artist, as a person in the game, a lot of them don't want to leave the streets alone because, yeah, it's a lot of bullshit that comes with it, but the streets is a mentality. I felt like I understood Meek's intent, but realistically, yo, I think that Meek just need to leave a lot of shit alone because a lot of artists don't want to sign with Meek. And I don't know what, for what reason, but I don't, you know, 
we haven't seen Meek as the artist that breaks artists. I think he needs to just create some detachment between him and the streets. Rather than just being a statement without evidence, Wayno's words would come true when it was revealed Roddy Rich happily discarded his ties to Meek once he got big. To preface this, it's important to note that Roddy Rich was once speculated to be on Meek Mill's Dream Chaser label, to the point that he was even spotted wearing a DC chain. Roddy Rich had a vague affiliation to Meek back in his early days. However, as time passed on, Roddy's connection to Meek began to fade. And he has since stated that if he were to sign with any artist's label, it would have been Nipsey Hussle's, as he felt Nipsey did more for him than Meek ever did. Still, Meek continued to assert that Roddy was taken from him by Atlantic Records, and that he had been blackballed during one of his infamous Twitter rants. In response, Roddy, who is 11 years younger than Meek, explained that this wasn't the right way to go about business. My only situation with him, he know this, so I can say whatever I want to say. One thing you're not going to ever hear me do, I'm a real nigga, I don't speak on shit with niggas, I explain this to him, please, let's not speak on our business and situations can't even call each other on the phone. Essentially cut out of the Roddy Rich story, this isn't even the only time that his label basically threw Meek to the side. Even when he was deep into his career and should have been seen as a fully fledged star when he released 2021's Expensive Pain, they still treated him like any other artist they had just signed. So why would they do this? Well, due to how Meek is treated these days, and how much the fan base's perception of him has changed over the years, they can do so with no consequences. Besides, his sales figures have kept declining to the point that even when he and Rick Ross dropped a long-awaited collaborative album in 2023, 31K, man. Damn, I remember this shit, bro. It peaked at number 23 on the charts and barely sold 31,000 units. Robbed of that kind of hunger his fan base used to have for new music, Meek is still trying to keep the buzz alive. But unfortunately, the way he goes about it also plays into how he's treated like a punchline by so much of the hip hop audience. But rather than sticking to his guns and doing what he wants to do, Meek cares far too much what people think. This was especially clear in June of 2023 when Meek took to Twitter to basically ask if he fell off. Who thinks I fell off or don't really think I got it with rapping anymore? Why the fuck would he tweet this? Why would he say this? Why the fuck would he say this? Why would he say this? Yo, this nigga is an idiot. I'm for real. I need answers. And tell the truth. I'm not taking it personal. I need to know how people think before I do what I do. Social experiment. Answer if you're a supporter of mine. I for real need answers and tell the truth because I'm not taking it personal. I need to hear how people think before I do what I do. A social experiment. With fans ultimately agreeing that his music doesn't hit as it used to in recent years, this intense search for validation left both fans and hip-hop commentators such as Charlemagne the God to clown him even more. Damn, a goat. A goat is supposed to be... A goat is looking for validation on Twitter, man. It's 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 so bad, bro. He, he done fell the fuck why off. Why do you care bro. what people on social media think? Why like, do people why need the fuck would he give validation for? from social media? And by the way, Meek, you can't get on social media and ask a question like that. Nah, because nobody's there to give you serious no, answers. Not at all. That Cut is it a, out. I would say probably eighty percent is gonna be BS, and they just gonna be attacking you because they can't. And when you consider how brutally Kanye West disrespected Meek, it's obvious that the big dogs in the game also don't see him in the same light because of everything he's done to make himself a target for clowning. For example. Look how Kanye reacted when Meek tried to call him out for wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt amidst the George Floyd riots. <laughs> and I put White Lives Matter on a t-shirt. Oh, you know what? Let's go get celebrities. Let's go get Puff Daddy. Let's get Dave Chappelle. Let's go get Meek Mills. What made somebody think Meek Mills could say something to me? Lace's journey, Sue. No, this is the funniest thing of everything. <laughs> <Listen. laughs> Yo, man, I'm about to start crying laughing, man. Somebody thought Meek Mills. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm literally in tears. <laughs> Although he didn't respond to these claims, it didn't make any impact because at the end of the day, Ye and Meek are seen as in two different leagues, not only creatively, but financially. As Ye has no shortage of slip ups on his record, the one thing you can't say is that he isn't true to himself. Meanwhile, the past few years have resulted in Meek being viewed as a toy for billionaires who like to boost their credibility by dealing with hip hop, as was the case for Michael Rubin. As I mentioned earlier, Meek has been linked up with Michael Rubin for a long time. Since then, he's added Robert Kraft to his list of exceptionally wealthy friends. But that doesn't explain the way that he gets treated by these guys, considering that Michael Rubin should really be treating him like an equal partner in their organization. Meek, the former gangster from Philly, has allowed himself to be mocked by these people too. Posting pictures of the toilet bowl after the Rubin white party like a sorority girl on wine.
multipolars to the many, many pictures of them embracing very tightly, the relationship with Ruben might have done wonders for his advocacy, but not for his reputation. You're gonna get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. Hey yo, freaky ass billionaires. Are they sharing a blanket? To make things worse, it doesn't seem like the address book is being put to work either. With Baby also getting his reputation destroyed by staying around Ruben, it was presumed they were to acquire game. But by the looks of it, this isn't the case whatsoever, as Meek still can't bring his projects to life. Meek said this on threads. He said, yo, where's that person in Silicon Valley that will work with... Do niggas still use threads? That shit is dead. They need to close that shit down on God. People like myself with influence and build this social media music based app where you go to hear new music watch exclusive interviews and content where if you sign up you may get new content from your favorite artists and sports players i think i would do sports and entertainment meet science now if you're hanging around 15 billionaires and you still tweeting like this trying to find that nigga what the fuck are these billionaires doing? What are they doing for you? They hugs. I think Meek may have meant to send this in the group chat. I'll be like, yo, Meek, why are you asking the general internet this? You know, Meek should be going to Mike Ruben and saying, listen, no more drunken hugs. I don't want you to try to rub my leg no more, brother. What I want you to do is that I, I have this idea for an app. Y'all are using me for my social equity and my cultural coolness. Yo, let's, let's do business. Between all of the mistreatment he's received both in rap and within the most exclusive sectors of society, it's now created a scenario where no matter what he does now, it's always tainted by his public persona away from the mic. As a result of this, it doesn't matter what he does, the go-to response is to mock him. For instance, Meek wasn't even given any leeway when his team made it to the Super Bowl. Although Dreams and Nightmares was a bit of an unofficial anthem for the Eagles, his decision to celebrate them making it to the big game with a freestyle over Hit Em Up just led to even more trolling. Bro could have just congratulated the team and moved on, always doing the most. I refuse to believe Meek Mill is a real person. Aside from that, one of the biggest factors that continues to damage Meek's credibility is that- That hurts, man. He could have been one of the goats, nigga. One of the greats, bro. He could have been in the same league as Drake, Kanye, all of them, bro. But damn, it hurts, bro. Damn, it hurts. I ain't gonna lie. It's just a joke now, man. What a fuck. He, he fell the fuck off. It's the over. Is just it's well over, bro. Out. Screaming in fast food restaurants aside, this is a guy <laughs> who will ask how African people hear his music or announce his love for Candace Owens even after she spent months dissing what him for going to jail and not expect to get any backlash because he doesn't calculate his moves at all likewise when he tries to assert himself like when he recently revealed that he charges 250k for a feature all people did was wonder how this was possible in 2024 we can name a thousand better ways to spend 250k other than a meek millverse seen as the butt of every joke it's reached the <laughs> point where he can't even kick an abuser off his label without getting blasted for it once footage surfaced of dream chasers artist vori literally threatening to kill who the fuck is Vori? His girlfriend, Meek Mill took swift and decisive action to remove him from the label ranks. As let's face it, the last thing Meek needs is even more bad publicity or reason to be torn down by the general public. But even with Vori <laughs> behaving in such a deplorable way- Yo, this nigga me. I'm still thinking about that video where he fucking started screaming in the McDonald's, bro. Like, it's not real, bro. On camera, this nigga's not people real. People were still not willing to take Meek's side or stand with him in the action he took. Dude always preaching about some bullshit. Bro, we don't even care if you're from Philly. Vori is better than Meek. This ain't 2012. No longer seen as a top tier artist, nor a cultural figure of note, it's fair to say that Meek's mishandling of his public image and the scrapes he's gotten himself into have really done considerable damage to his career. To make matters worse, it was recently revealed that Meek was one of the redacted names listed in a new sexual lawsuit. <sighs> yeah, 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 I heard about that, man. Damn. Damn. I think it might be gay. Against Sean. I heard about Holmes, that shit. Leading many to believe the rapper is gay. This has sparked numerous memes all across social media as Meek's response to the drama was to say anything but admit it was false. However, oh God, dude, he was just doing, I remember that day, he was just doing anything but just saying it's not real, that it's not true, bro. He was just talking about anything else, bro. Like, he's really a dumbass. Like, he needs, 
He should not run his Twitter account. Like I said a million times, he should not be running his fucking account. They need to take it from him. They need to log him out. Do something, bro. He tried to be smart in this situation and put out a five song album and attempt to capitalize off the publicity. Sadly, it would backfire. And as stated in this post by his enemy academics, the results weren't looking too well. How much did he sell again? I don't even remember. From the moment it it's like 3K or something. It was so bad. It was like 3K, I think.